Hello, my name is Paul Schmelzer, and I'm an attorney at Clark Hill and part of the firm's cybersecurity and data privacy business unit. For our healthcare law video series, I will be speaking about cybersecurity for healthcare providers and specifically how healthcare providers can improve their cybersecurity posture to mitigate the threat of a cybersecurity incident. Cyber attacks continue to grab headlines as hacking and IT incidents affect hospitals and healthcare systems. Healthcare providers are being forced to cancel surgeries, radiology exams, and other services because their system software and or networks are disabled by these attacks. Patch vulnerabilities give hackers easy access to an organization's computer servers and possibly entry into other parts of their network. Healthcare providers should consider the following to improve their cybersecurity posture. First, increase people's awareness about threats and vulnerabilities that can jeopardize the information they work with daily in their role within the healthcare organization. The healthcare practice must implement and enforce policies and procedures that require the proper safeguards to be used. Every person in the organization must subscribe to a shared vision of information security so that habits and practices are automatic. Education and training must be frequent and ongoing, preferably as frequent as possible and no later than annually. Protecting patients through good information security practices should be second nature to the healthcare organization. Where it is necessary to commit electronic health information to a mobile device, Cybersecurity experts recommend that the data be encrypted. Mobile devices that cannot support encryption should not be used. The organization should also uninstall any software application that is not essential to running the practice, such as games, instant messaging clients, and photo sharing tools. If the purpose of a software application is not obvious, look at the software company's website to learn more about the application's purposes and uses. Also check with your electronic health record or EHR developer to see if the software is critical to the EHR's function. Do not simply accept defaults or standard configurations when installing software. Step through each option, understand the choices, and obtain technical assistance where necessary. Keeping software up to date is critical to maintaining a secure system, since many of these updates address newly found vulnerabilities in the product. User accounts should be appropriately and timely disabled. If an employee is to be involuntarily terminated, disable access to account before the notice of termination is served on that employee. Computers and any other devices, such as copy machines, that may have had data stored on them should be sanitized before disposal. Even if all the data on a hard drive has been deleted, it can still be recovered with commonly available tools. Old data files should be archived for storage if needed or cleaned off the system if not needed, subject to the organization's applicable data retention requirements. Software that is no longer needed is fully installed, including trial software and old versions of current software used by the practice. Unless an EHR system is totally disconnected from the internet, it should have a firewall to protect against intrusions and threats from outside sources. After implementation of EHRs, it is important to keep antivirus software up to date. Antivirus products require regular updates from the vendor in order to protect against the newest computer viruses and malware. Most antivirus software automatically generates reminders about these updates, and many are configurable to allow for automated updating. In most computer systems, credentials such as usernames and passwords are used as part of an access control system in which users are assigned certain rights to access the data within. Configure your EHR implementation to grant electronic health information access only to people with a need to know. Additional access controls that may be configured for the organization include role-based access control, in which a staff member's role within the practice determines what information may be accessed. In this case, care must be taken to assign staff to the correct roles, and then to assign the access permission, set the access permissions for each role correctly with respect to the need to know. Passwords are the first line of defense in preventing unauthorized access to any computer. Regardless of type or operating system, a password should be required to log in. Although a strong password will not prevent attackers from trying to gain access, 
it can slow them down and discourage them. In addition, strong passwords combined with effective access controls can help to prevent casual misuse. Since attackers may use automated methods to try to guess a password, it is important to choose a password that does not have characteristics that could make it vulnerable. Strong password characteristics include at least eight characters in length, although the longer the better, a combination of uppercase and lowercase letters, at least one number, and at least one special character, such as a punctuation mark. Systems should be configured so that passwords must be changed on a regular basis. Strong or multi-factor authentication, which combines multiple different authentication methods resulting in stronger security, is recommended. If you haven't looked at your risk management policies and procedures recently to prevent or mitigate these concerns, now is the time to do so. Some best practices include maintaining offline encrypted backups of data and regularly testing these backups for viability, conducting regular scans to identify and address vulnerabilities, especially those on internet facing devices to limit the organization's attack service, making regular patches and updates of software and operating systems and training employees regarding phishing and other common IT attacks. I cannot emphasize how important this is. Practicing good cyber hygiene habits will keep your network healthy and your practice healthy as well and protect electronic protected health information on your systems.